your turn. Oh, hi, I'm Justin. I'm 35 years old. Hi, Justin. So where are we here? Uh, right now we're at uh, like the Commons Center, essentially, at uh, Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay, how are you feeling? I feel great. Yeah, why? Uh, well, <laughs> Uh, they've asked me to come here as myself, celebrity chef Justin Warner, and you know when you're on flyers and like they even have my face on a napkin dispenser, you know it's hard not to feel good about yourself. And I also just spent the past uh, hour or so just making people happy, giving them free stuff, giving them free samples of me. Mm -hmm. So apparently you are a celebrity. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I, I do a lot of work in television, and I've been in a lot of living rooms in America. So, once I'm in your living room, I guess I'm a celebrity. So thank you for taking the time with me. My pleasure. So let's start with who are you, uh, beside being a celebrity? Yeah, I don't know. It annoys me sometimes that uh, what we do governs who we are. So, I'm just a dude from Western Maryland originally. Uh, I didn't go to college, barely made it out of high school. Uh, I'm serial monogamist. And uh, that's it. Mostly I just like to keep myself entertained and keep everybody around me happy. Mm -hmm. I'm a bon vivant. Do you want to share a bit of your story with us? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I started working in restaurants when I was 15, um, and I haven't really stopped. But I get, uh, I always try and look for improvements and room to improve. So a lot of people work in restaurants and they work in a sports bar or something like that, and then that's the end of their restaurant career. But I keep, I kept trying to go up and up and up until eventually I was working in New York at a Michelin rated restaurant. Then from, then from there, I accidentally fell into a job in TV where I won a bunch of contests. And uh, now I'm a celebrity chef with my name on the napkin holder. On which channel can we see you? Uh, Food Network, primarily. However, I also have a show on YouTube called Eat the Universe, which is with Marvel Comics. Mm -hmm. What brings you joy? Uh, for me, I mean, primarily my dog and my wife. But... Um, Really just seeing people have a positive reaction to new experiences. For example, I made wasabi marshmallows over there. And when people are like hesitant, then they try it and they get it. And then they're like, wow, that was great. You know, like imagine if everything that you thought was going to sting actually felt good. That would be great. <laughs> you know, like seeing that, that's what gives me joy. That and like just being content with my own self like sometimes I wake up in the morning and like just like got my wife got my dog the fan is running I don't know why but the fan brings me joy you know it's a pretty simple luxury but it's luxurious nonetheless and I'm just like damn this is great where do you live? South Dakota I live in South Dakota it's very cold there right now but it makes the summers even better you know what is your biggest fear Justin? oh uh, that's good question because I kind of pride myself in not really having a lot of fears um, I think you can start by not being afraid of your food the thing that nourishes you uh, but uh, I don't know I would really hate to um, I would really hate to lose my wife like I love my I love my wife more than anything and she's like an incredible source of energy for me um, and then I also kind of like if that happened I would just be like God, like what is the point <laughs> you know and I, I don't want to ever get in that position where I'm saying what is the point because like every day there's a point and that's to kick today's ass or to make somebody have a wasabi marshmallow you know that's just me so you probably don't know <laughs> what are you proud of? um I'm proud that I didn't um I didn't I wasn't really set up aside from being born a white male which is a pretty huge setup. Um, I wasn't really set up for a lot of success and I, I would believe that by most metrics I have been seen as successful um, and so you know that's great like I think it's cool to go to a college and tell people I didn't go to college you know and when that was the thing to do now people are like yeah you need to work in trades and being a chef is like a noble career but like when I was doing it you know like if you weren't gonna be a doctor you're, you're not gonna be somebody and so I, I'm just pleased that I'm able to have an opinion and be respected, you know, and for whatever it is that I believe in. That's cool. I don't know. What is success for you? For me, man, it's just getting through the day and being able to have a beer afterwards. That's it, honest to God, you know? Like, simple luxury. If you can, if you can treat yourself well once a day, that to me is success. 
You know, think how many people can't like buy themselves a cup of coffee, but look around, every single person in those places treating themselves well. But then maybe it's also the mindset of, when you have that cup of coffee, am I treating myself well? Or am I, when I have that beer, is this a reward for what I've done? Or simply, like I deserve it, you know? Are you in tune with your emotions? I try to be, I cry I think a lot more than the average man. When was the last time you cried? The other day, I was feeling overwhelmed. And I was like traveling too much. And my wife said something that annoyed me and that I was probably overly sensitive to because I was hungry and tired and I had been traveling too much. And so then when I realized that I like wasn't mad, that I had like kind of like, you know, dug this damn hole myself. You know, what do you do when you're at the bottom of the hole? You cry, <laughs> you know? It's a very human reaction, at least I think so. I, I, I might have also teared up watching The Mandalorian the other day on Star Wars, or on, on <laughs> Disney. <laughs> so I suppose that you are American? Yeah, I was born in America, yeah. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be American? Uh, you know, that's obviously a huge question, but... Um, I don't know, man. I think it's mostly a, a state of mind. I, so I do work for Marvel Comics, and I had this weird epiphany the other day that, you know, if I ran down the street with an American flag dressed like an American flag, people would assume that I was Republican. And like, why? Like, Captain America is not partisan at all. Like, Captain America represents what makes America, America. And he doesn't believe in like political parties. He simply believes in this idea of this experiment that keeps going on. And so, I don't know, to me, to be an American means to be willing to participate in the experiment. And understanding that there may be no results to said experiment. Do you plan to vote in 2020? Yeah, yeah, I will. I, I live in South Dakota, you know, when I lived in New York and I was just like kind of swallowed up in a sea of blue, it was like not that big of a deal to me. Um, I also am probably one of the last people to complain about the political process, but yeah, in South Dakota I'm definitely going to vote. I also feel as though maybe you need to be like, I don't know, I, in the years where I didn't vote, it was simply because I wasn't informed. And so I think you should only really vote if you're informed, mm -hmm. or informed to like the best of your knowledge, you know? Do you believe in something? Not really. Nothing. No, I mean, I, I, I believe that like when things happen in a nice way and I say the expression, well, that's no coincidence. That simply means that like you should take advantage of the situation. And so, like, for me, like, you know, energy rules. Like, I love energy. I love positivity. You know, if I had to believe in something, it's that, like, good vibes are real. <laughs> I know that sounds hippy-dippy, but, you know, if you're going to believe in something, I think positivity is probably the way to go. So what is the truth? You just got to keep doing it, yeah? You know? And try and make as many people feel better along the way. You know, like, when you hike... You know, you're supposed to leave the trail better than you found it. Probably means don't hike, <laughs> you know? But in life, I don't, I don't know, I just try and leave the trail better than I found it. And sometimes that takes a delicate hand. And I think a lot of people don't, they don't look at their day as a trail. And that to me is the truth. It's just like, try not to, try to piss off as few people as possible. Uh, but also piss off people when it means making the trail better. You know? Is it your truth? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've done it long enough that if I don't believe that, then I probably <laughs> probably shouldn't be talking about it, you know? So what's next for you on this trail? Uh, I'm going to go back to my home in South Dakota tomorrow night. Um, hunting season starts there. I'm not a real hunter, but uh, I think that as a person who works in food, it's important to have that sort of connection with food and resource gathering. So I'll probably do that. And then after that, I got a lot more work to do. Got some cookbooks and stuff. Why did you accept to answer my questions? Because why not? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, if it's the truth, it should have no problem saying it, right? Like, I shouldn't need a publicist for like the words that come out of my mouth. I mean, I don't know. Do you I, accept I post this video on social media? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, no problem at all whatsoever. Thank I live you. there. Absolutely. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, my pleasure. Nice to meet you.